वेलकम टू माई YouTube चैनल माई नेम इज मोहम्मद उबैद एंड दिस इज द सीरीज ऑन अर्थक्वेक इंजीनियरिंग एंड सॉफ्टवेयर प्रैक्टिस एंड इन द फर्स्ट वीडियो ऑफ दिस सीरीज वी विल डिस्कस द इम्पोर्टेंस ऑफ अन रिनफोर्स ब्रिक मैसेनरी इनफिल इन द स्ट्रक्चरल एनालिसिस एंड हाउ टू मॉडल दिस बिहेवियर एंड वाट इज स्ट्रट एनोलॉजी एंड वाट आर द डिफरेंट गाइडलाइंस ऑफ कोर्स फॉर मॉडलिंग द अन रिनफोर्स ब्रिक मैसेनरी इनफिल इन आवर स्ट्रक्चर सो लेट स्टार्ट द वीडियो now first of all we should understand what are the common design practices which we follow to analyze and design our structure so in the common practice we do not consider the effect of infill we just analyze our model as bare frame we consider the weight of the infill wall on these beams uh, and on all the beams but we do not consider the effective stiffness of the infill panels which will affect our structure so we do not consider this behavior and we analyze the structure as it is and after analyzing we design the structure but when we construct the structure we usually construct the walls so if there is an earthquake or there is an wind load which is significant then the infill wall will also resist the lateral load and how will it resist the lateral load up to which limit it will resist the lateral load and what will be the change in the behavior of the structure overall so this is very important to consider but we do not consider usually this behavior of infill because it is very difficult to consider this behavior uh, if uh, we are we are doing the non linear analysis okay so we usually do not consider this structure but in this video we will see some guidelines of code uh, which gives uh, simplified procedure to model this behavior okay now in our next slide we will see this is our next slide how the infill wall react under lateral loading okay so this is a frame uh, having infill wall now if the lateral load is applied on the frame the frame will deflect like this okay but we have uh, infill panel in between the frame so the infill panel do not have tensile strength okay it can only resist compressive forces so when the lateral load is applied the infill panel will behave as a compression strut along this diagonal okay because it cannot take any tensile force along this diagonal or diagonal so it will only that is the compressive force along this diagonal so what is the main idea the main idea is to model this infill panel as a compression strut along this diagonal okay when the loading is applied uh, in our model later load is applied in our model there will be a compression strut which will uh, behave or which will uh, which will represent our infill panel in our model okay so in our next slide we will see how the lateral load uh, we, we can see how the lateral load transfer mechanism change when we consider the infill and when we do not consider the infill so when we do not consider the infill or we consider only bare frame there will be frame action what is frame action the lateral load is transferred uh, from beam to column and column to beam like this at beam column joint and then finally goes to the foundation but when there is a infill frame so the action will be truss action okay the forces will also be uh, taken by the infill and which which will act as a compression member so you can see here that the forces are also taken by the infill and uh, it will act along the diagonal which we will model as a compression strut in our model okay now this is a picture showing how we model the infill panel as a equivalent diagonal member or equivalent diagonal compression strut so this is our infill panel and between this this is the diagonal equivalent diagonal which represent the whole panel of this masonry wall so what uh, what are the different parameters like the width of this panel and the uh, width uh, what will be its uh, breadth 
came so how can we find all these parameters so there are different codes which gives the guidelines how to find out these parameters uh, and uh, in our is 1893 2016 there are also some guidelines and this is the screenshot from fema 3 fema 356 code this is a very general code and it is very famous code so these are the guidelines given in fema 356 how to model the infill wall so this is the in plane behavior okay in plane behavior we are not considering the out plane behavior here we are only concerned with the in plane behavior of the wall okay so this is the width a a is the width of the strut what is the width this is the width of the strut we can consider the thickness of the strut as our as the thickness of our masonry infill like usually we provide uh, 230 or 115 mm masonry infill so we can take the thickness as Uh, 230 or 115, which we have provided, and the width of the width of the strut, a we can find out by this term, formula 0.175 lambda 1 h column, e h column to the power minus 0.4 r infill, and lambda 1 we can find out from this formula. And now uh, we should understand what h column, what is h column, and what is what is h infill. So in our previous slide. we can see here that h column is the center center line to center line distance between the uh, center line center line distance between the beams okay this is the center line of our top beam and this is the center line of our bottom beam uh, this height we call h column and what is h infill h infill is the height of the infill panel okay and l infill l infill is the length of the infill panel okay Uh, now what are different parameters in this formula i column what is i column i column is the moment of inertia of column uh, which we can find out easily from the formula uh, b bh cube upon 12 or bh uh, depending upon the shape of the column we can find out i column easily r infill what is r r infill r infill is the diagonal length of this strut member okay so this we can also find easily because we will need this r infill in our formula to find out the width of the strut this is r infill okay r infill can also be find out by after finding out the this angle there will uh, there will be a angle theta and we know what is h infill and what is n infill l infill we can find out angle theta and after finding we can find out this r infill length okay now this is the fema 356 guideline now what is what are the guidelines given by our is 1893 so this is a screenshot from is 1893 2016 part 1 our code says that we should model the strut uh, in the same way as fema 356 says uh, the formula similar similar the formula given in fema 356 and the formula given in our code are similar similar now what is uh, more which is given in our is 1893 is uh, we can find out the fm masonry strength what is masonry strength because when we model our masonry in fill we will need em okay as uh, em it is also needed in uh, fema 356 approach what is em em is the expected modulus of elasticity of infill now how to find this elasticity of modulus of infill so there are very simplified procedure which we can apply first of all we have to find the prism strength of our masonry what is prism strength prism strength is find out by doing the prism test which is given in our is1 is1905 code if we do not have the data of prism test we can use this formula fm is equal to 0.433 fb whole power 0.64 and fm fm to the power point 36 okay uh, what is that the comparative strength of brick and comparative strength of mortar which is known so here from here we can find out fm and after finding out fm we can put this into this formula em is equal to 550 fm from which formula we will find out the modulus of elasticity of infill wall after finding em we can put this value of em into this formula and Uh, sin theta we can find out easily 
and after putting all these values in this we can find out alpha h and after finding alpha h we can uh, easily find out the width of the diagonal strut okay now is 1893 also gives some provision for the width of this strut okay the diagonal strut shall be modeled as pin joint to the rc frame because uh, we have seen uh, earlier that there will be compression strut action so strut can only take axial force so we have to join it as pin jointed to the rc frame now what are some other guidelines uh, for urm in film wall with openings if there are some opening that there will be no reduction in the strut width okay now what are, what is other guidelines the code also says that we can use the same thickness of this infill panel uh, same thickness of this strut as uh, the thickness of our infill panel in the modeling provided that the h upon t h is the height of infill divided by thickness of this ball should be less than 12 and the ratio of length of the infill divided by thickness of the infill should be less than 12. This two condition, these two conditions should be provided so we can use the uh, thickness of the wall as the thickness of our diagonal strut. Okay, so this is it for this video and we will meet in the next video. Thank you very much for watching.